Hello, 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 everybody, and welcome to episode two of the Calypso Cigar Shop and Lounge podcast. Episode two, episode dos. Numero dos. And other words for two in different languages. My name is Brandon Luna. I'm Randy Rankin. And welcome to the show. Today we're going to be reviewing the James Norman Nicaraguan Puro in a Robusto size. In a Robusto size. A five and a quarter by 52. So we made it past episode one. Yay, we're live after smoking the green one. What'd you think? I liked it. I, overall, thumbs up on that on that uh, Candela I, cigar. I could not wait. I smoked another one. <laughs> Did you? Okay, yeah. you were going to wait a week. Or, I was going to wait a week. I just uh, ended up not waiting a week. I smoked okay. another one a couple days ago, and um, I liked it a little bit better. Um, I'm, I'm leaving the other two for a good long while. Let them have a dirt nap. Well, not a dirt nap. That sounds bad. Yeah. They're does. not going to die. One has a dirt nap in my backyard right now. He's going to grow a plant for me, and the others are going to sit in my yeah. humidor for a couple months. So today we're going to review um, the James Norman Nicaraguan Puro, which is uh, basically constructed of aged Nicaraguan cigar leaf and is only available at selected retailers, Calypso Cigar Shop and Lounge being one of them. Um, it has a wrapper that is Nicaraguan Double Binder and Nicaraguan Fillers of Esteli and Condega. It comes in three sizes, a uh, 5 and a fourth by 52 Robusto at $7.95 a pop, a 6x50 Toro at $8.95, and a 6x60 Magnum, Magnum, at $9.95. And you can buy any five of these and get a sixth one free through Calypso Cigar. Uh, the free cigar is at least uh, least expensive of the ones that you select, right, basically. Exactly. Yeah, it's usually exactly. the way the deals work. Right. Um, what's the phone number at Calypso Cigar? The phone number is 972-761-9903. And you can look us up on Facebook as well, Calypso Cigar Shop and Lounge in Richardson, Texas. Excellent. So, Randy, what have you smoked this week um, since we last talked? I have smoked uh, a few, obviously. Uh, don't know that I've smoked anything new right off the top of my head, but uh, I have found that uh, the Oliva G Maduro with coffee has just got to be a morning staple for me now. It's becoming right. something I have to have. Do I have it every day? No, but in my mind, I have to have one every day. I just, I just, I'm on this kick with the. Uh, with that cigar in the morning, I don't know what the deal is. Like we talked about with the music, you get into a yeah. groove and you just you just kind of want it all the time. How about you, Brennan? Um, I've smoked a couple this week. Um, I did some more uh, black markets because I had them uh, available and they were at the mm -hmm. top of my humidor. Mm -hmm. I had a, a Rocky Patel uh, Connecticut, which I did not like. Um, the 99? Yeah. Really? Okay. I, eh, just okay. didn't do it for me. Right. Um, and what else did I have? I also had a uh, Muwat, my Uzi weighs a ton. Okay. Uh, bait fish, which is a little guy. And uh, wasn't too big of a fan of that one okay. either. Um, right. What else did I have that I liked? There was a couple that I had this week that I liked. I had the Candela again. Eh, something else. I'll think about it later. But um, So today we're going to get into this one. We've already cut it. We're going to uh, light it off um, camera too so we don't, you know, get in your ear with that. I know that's kind of annoying to a lot of people. Don't light. Don't cut on the cam <laughs> on the audio because it's annoying. So we're going to avoid that for you. Um, we're going to do it. We're just going to edit it out. You know, this is the second time we've done this. Uh -huh. We have not done a cold draw. We have been remiss in the cold draw. Damn yep. it! <laughs> I know. And that's, uh, you know, it's something that uh, Matt had to show me. As I was learning more about cigar smoking, he taught, told me about the cold draw. And I got religious about it for the longest time, and I, I was just, I guess we've just been lax lately. I think we've just been excited about smoking the cigar. So. Yeah. But uh, I always, yeah, I typically do on a new cigar, I typically do the cold draw just to get an idea of what kind of flavors I'm going to get from it. And then uh, sometimes it surprises you and it's different, but, mm -hmm. you know, it's only sometimes. Right off the bat, I am getting a, a good tobacco flavor. Um, not really any spice. It's actually kind of mild for me. It uh, has a little nuttiness, I think, at the beginning, at least on the palate. Yeah, I'll get that at the back. Yeah, and uh, uh, great draw. Yeah, the draw is awesome. Uh, it's, yeah, it's putting off a lot of smoke. And we should mention we were smoking the Robusto. Ah, the Robusto. What is the size, size. again? It's uh, six by six. Oh no, it's the uh, five and one fourth by fifty-two Robusto. Yeah, it's a fifty-two ring Robusto, mm -hmm. and uh, it's meaty. I mean, it's yeah. very dense. It's got uh, some smoke coming off it too. Yeah, it does. Yeah, it's burning. burning it's making nicely. a show. Do a dance. Yep. So you smoked uh, quite a few of these, right? I, this is probably the. Seventh or eighth one I've had. Uh, I've liked it every time. You're right in that it is a milder cigar. It's it's not. Uh, it's certainly a medium medium body. I wouldn't say medium to full so much. Just a, but straight it's a, up medium. Yeah, yeah, it's a straight up medium with a 
I, I think it has a nice taste on the tongue. It has a very good taste. I like it. Uh, I did the retro hail, and mm-hmm. through the nose, you get a little extra spice. Mm-hmm. And there's a little, to me, there's like a, a faint hint of like kind of an almond thing going on. Yeah, it's a little nutty, as, yeah, yeah, the nutty. nuttiness. Yeah, yeah. right. Very specific, though, because I, sometimes I get like a, you know, different kind of, like almost like a peanut or something, but almonds okay. is really. I don't have that discerning out. a nut of a nut. Uh, yeah, I can palette. taste nuts in my mouth really well. <laughs> <laughs> That's what she said. <laughs> Jeez. I know. I went for it. Too yeah, early. I was yeah. gonna wait. I was gonna wait for it. That's what she said. But um, we can no, edit that out. Yeah, it just depends. I mean, um, I get a cup. Well, I, one of the things I wanted to talk about was the flavor wheel. There's uh-huh. this thing that they have um, that you can look at that should, talks about the flavor wheel, and I wanted to get your opinion on that and what you think. You know, what you can pick up, what you think is BS. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, you know, I get. I've gotten better about certain things as I've progressed, but some of that stuff on the flavor wheel, I'm like, yeah, okay, sure, guys, right? You really think that's in there? Go for it. But um, I really think it's it's depends on the person and um, you know how long they've been smoking. And I also, you know, I have a, a theory on um, on the whole tasting cigars thing because uh, I have a friend that's very analytical, very um, the mathematics, you know, kind of tech right. engineer right. kind of guy. And he basically, he tastes tobacco and pepper and that's pretty much it. You right. Know? Yeah. But, um, you and I both are creative minds. We both, you know, wrote screenplays and want to do movies and acting and all kinds of stuff. I do voice work for cartoons for Christ's sake. So I think when you have that creative side of you, the right brain kind of takes over and you tend to be a little more creative about what you get. Right. Yeah. You so, want to, yeah, you want to, you want to figure out what it is you're smoking or, yeah. or drink, you know, uh, same with a, with a, um, a bourbon or a scotch. Yep. Very, very similar. Or even coffee. It didn't always have to be a alcoholic drink. Uh, true, true, true. It's, it's pretty interesting. The stuff they have on here. I don't know that I've seen this particular one. That one seems to be pretty. That, yeah, I've seen that one. That's kind of hard to read. So you go nutty, nutty, walnut, hazelnut, and almond, mm-hmm. which I get, I've had the walnut before on a cigar, but it was almost because it was an older, it was a really old cigar. Right. You know, and it was an old Cuban and it had a mustiness to it. And mm. I think that's what turned the nuttiness into that walnut because it was walnut. musty. Right. And walnuts have that kind of, right. you know, ugh. hazelnut I really haven't picked up at all. Mm-hmm. Um, I have picked up caramel, no butterscotch. Yeah, that's the one. There was one when you, <clears throat> you were discussing the, the wheel at the beginning of this mm-hmm. podcast. I was thinking there's one that I've never gotten and that was butterscotch. I couldn't think of which one it was, but... I had a friend one time who swore that this Fuente he was smoking had a butterscotch taste to it. Yeah. And I wasn't smoking the same cigar, so I don't know. Yeah. I have since had that cigar, and mm-hmm. I've picked up no butterscotch. Yeah. And it's, you know, it's all based on who you are and what your palate does. Right. And, you know, I think a lot of it has to do with how clean your palate is as well and how open to it you are, you know. That's Absolutely. a part of it as Absolutely. well. Absolutely. I tend to try and stay away from reviews before I smoke a cigar. Mm-hmm. Because I tend to, I want to take that journey on my own and right. see what I can get out of right. it before right. I read somebody else's opinion. Right. Um, because I, I know a lot of people. I mean, when I was coming up learning about cigars, I would read, I would read the you know reviews because I had no freaking concept of like I don't know what I'm tasting. It's tobacco, and then you read the review and you go, oh, okay, well there's a little nuttiness or there's a little vanilla or there's a little this, and I would kind of equate the tastes and go, okay, I kind of see that. But as I progressed and started doing it on my own, I think I just wanted to kind of test myself. Right. And, um, so now I, I know pretty much what I'm picking up right mm. off the bat. And um, I like to use that when, uh, after the fact, if I read reviews, um, I'll go, okay, well, I got this and this and this from the cigar. Let's read five reviews and see if anybody got what I got. And if I have a guy that, you know, kind of is in my, you know, wheelhouse there, then I know that that guy's reviews are going to be pretty spot on to what I'm going to like. Right, right. And, um, you know, what it, I don't see on any of these sites is they, they always have these really long, verbose reviews with, you know, convoluted things and you just kind of wanted to skip to the bottom and go was it good or not you know exactly and i would love a site to have just like stars you know just have like five star cigar two star cigar one star cigar so that if i know that that guy's in my he's got the same kind of taste that i do i can go well these are five star cigars i don't have to read the review i know these are probably ones i'm gonna like gotcha yeah you know so and that makes sense and i think we're all uh programmed to if you read a review of anything a movie um Mm -hmm. bourbon Yep. Cigars, anything. If you once you've read a review, it plants a thought in your head. Yeah. It's a subliminal type of of situation. It is. I know there was a bourbon I used to drink back in the day and I and I loved it. Mm-hmm. 
And one day I was reading a book on bourbons, and I had this bourbon in there, and I was reading the, the review of it, and it mentioned that it had raisin, a hint of raisin in it. Well, I'm not a big fan of raisins, and the next time I drank that bourbon, I didn't like it. The message subliminally hit my head and my palate, and I therefore never drank that bourbon again. Oh, I didn't like it, and it was just because of a stupid review. Yeah. I had had bottles of that stuff and had never picked up raisins. So. That's weird. So I, I do agree, and Matt and I, when we, uh, when it, and Matt, Matt, by the way, is Matt Badosky. He is the owner of the Calypso Cigar Shop. He and I, when we get a new cigar from a rep, we try to smoke it at the same time. So that way we don't put thoughts in each other's heads before we smoke the cigar. Mm -hmm. And we'll compare it somewhat like Brandon and I are doing now. But, mm -hmm. you know, we're, we're a busy store, so we're not constantly in each other's, uh, you know, space. So we can't constantly do the review like you and I are doing. Yeah. So what we do is I'm, I'm around helping customers, puffing on it. And then we'll come back at the end of it and say, what did you think? Yeah. And then that's when we'll do it. Because if before I would be like, Matt, you're going to love this cigar. And he'd smoke it. And uh, what? no, I didn't really like it. Oh. Yeah. Or Matt, you know, this cigar has got a real nice leathery taste. Oh, yeah, it does. You know, it just was, it, we weren't getting a proper review of the cigar. Yeah. And weren't making proper decisions because we weren't, you know, reviewing it. Yeah. In a proper fashion. Gotcha. Yeah, uh, it's it's definitely good to smoke with others, and that's why the B&M experience is so good, because you get you know hang out with people and experience a cigar together, especially if you're smoking the same thing, which I like to do when I go to uh, B&M with some friends and stuff. Absolutely. Uh, it's always a good thing to do, I think. <clears throat> well, I didn't light this correctly. I've got a bad burn. Mine looks awesome. Okay, so we're one and one <laughs> yeah. on, on good. <laughs> but it's got a great burn, though, and the ash looks nice, mm -hmm. and... Um, it is it's very meaty. It's a, it's a dark it's a, ash. It's a real it's nice It's really dark ash, yeah. kind of a, not really, it doesn't taste like meat. Um, I've had one cigar ever that I smoked that tasted like meat, and that was a uh, four kicks. It was, really? like, it was like barbecue beef. It was weird. Really? Yeah. I, I was can't like, what imagine. the heck I don't, is this? I don't was, even want to try that. Yeah. Uh, no, it was actually kind of good. It good? Until it got near the end, and it gets kind of like charred barbecue, and you're like, ah, I'm not so hot on it now. But um, no, was it like mesquite or mesquite barbecue yeah or, it was, it was okay. very i don't know just very meaty and barbecue to me i don't know why that's weird i've that's seen fun. some reviews on it too that are like that though so i was like yes you know <laughs> you i'm not up. crazy yeah. well i don't know about that but. yeah well i am crazy <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> but uh to the cigar i mean i just love the taste on the tongue i mean I, mm -hmm. it's so uh smooth it's but, yeah. with, but with a lot of flavor i mean I, I just really love the flavor of this smoke yeah it's a very good flavor what are these these go for like like eight, eight nine ten. Yeah, I can see that. I'd pay that for it. Yeah, anyway. it ramped up um, a little right at the start. It was a little mild for me, but it's definitely moved into the medium side. And uh, I'm getting a little bit of the. We mentioned leather. Uh, it's not really so much leather. It's just a spicy kind of earthy thing for mm -hmm. me. Right. Absolutely. Now it's uh, it's medium brown. Mm -hmm. The wrappers, I've had, wrappers I've had wrappers people sports. ask if it's Connecticut, and I don't I don't see where they get Connecticut. It doesn't look Connecticut. No, it's to me. darker than a Connecticut. Absolutely. Uh, we should mention James Norman, for a lot of people in the cigar world, they're not going to know who James Norman is. Mm -hmm. James Norman is a world-famous pipe distributor. Oh, okay. Probably 75 80% of the pipes we have in our store are James Norman pipes. Their rep had the idea that they needed to start selling cigars. They needed to come up with a cigar and start marketing cigars. And this was one of three blends that they came up with, and Matt was asked to pick from the three. He chose this one, the rep chose this one, and therefore the cigar came into existence, and that's what we're smoking today. That's cool. I mean, people get to pick a blend on a cigar. That's awesome. That is great. I was not involved in that, unfortunately. Does he get free cigars for life? He should, shouldn't he? He should. We should, uh, we we should, should bring that up. And we should get free cigars for life. Well, since we're, you know, we can work as his agent and right. get 10% of his free cigars. Exactly, right. Absolutely. They'll be cutting Toros in half. There you go. <laughs> yeah, I like it so far. It's tasty. Right. Uh, now, I have had this before. This is my second one, so I'm not going totally fresh into this, um, which I prefer to do. That way, I kind of, you know, if I had a bad experience the first time, I get it the second time, I like it a little more, or vice versa. You know, you can talk to consistency. Um, so far, it's very consistent with the first one I had. Um, That's a good word. Every one of them has been consistent. Yeah. I haven't picked up anything new each mm -hmm. time I've smoked one, but I've enjoyed each one I've smoked. Yep. It's a, it's a good, it's a good, beautiful, it's a beautiful wrapper. There's really no voids in it. I'm just kind of no, feeling it's it a not, little not bit. Not very veiny. No, not very veiny at all, actually. I see a hint of oiliness in the wrapper. Yeah, you can see it. You can see it sparkling off the lights here a little bit. So right. it's got a little sheen to it. 
but good construction overall. Great burn on mine. It's you know pretty close mine, to razor sharp. Mine fixed pretty pretty easily. Excelente. So we should uh, discuss what we're going to be doing on today's episode. Um, we're going to do a couple fun things. Um, I'm going to we're going to talk a little bit about um, internet versus um, B and M because we mentioned that previous on the other episode and didn't really get into it. And I wanted to uh, pick your brain on something and also express some concerns. And um, we're also going to talk a little bit about some other kind of surprise things that I'm going to hit you with and okay. hit you with some knowledge, man. See okay. if you can All right. see if you can put me on the spot, huh? Yeah. Well, see, both both um, Randy and I are movie fans, and um, you know, we're both kind of our. I think my life revolved around movies for many, many years, and I Absolutely. kind of equate it with a lot of things. And mm-hmm. cigars to me are kind of like movies, you know, because right. you have a beginning, middle, and an end. Right. There's characters in the movie. There's characters in a cigar, you know. And very uh, nice uh, yeah. analogy. And also. Um, we talked about reading reviews before you smoke a cigar. Right. For me, reading a review before you smoke a cigar is like someone telling you about the movie before you saw it. Right. Prime example, high school, Ferris Bueller's Day Off comes out. Right. Everybody's talking about it at school. I didn't get a chance to see it. By the time I saw the movie, I knew everything about it. Didn't like it. Right. So, My, me, my movie was Top Gun. Everyone yeah. in, my, in my class had seen Top Gun, talked about how great it was. So by the time I finally saw it, when it came out on VHS... I didn't like the movie. I thought this is the movie everyone thought was so great because it had been built up so much that I just it was a letdown for me when yeah. I finally saw it. And I think that, you know, happens a lot with cigars. There's, you know, an abundance of marketing for a cigar and there's an abundance right. of people telling you that it's great, and then you read all these reviews about it and say it's awesome and by the time you get to it with, you know, so many things floating in your head, it's like, eh, half the time, you know. Absolutely. Very seldom do they meet expectations. Right. At least for me. So what are we doing, uh where were you going with this movie? comment oh you'll see okay all right <laughs> this is where i'm gonna get put on the spot yeah you'll get put okay. on the spot. okay yeah brandon and i are let big, the wheels turn my friend brandon and i are big movie uh bob says he's mentioned we've both written screenplays uh-huh. and done some acting and i've yet to hear your voice work on the cartoons i would like to, hear, I need to see get, a cartoon yeah and, uh, hear, i, I hear haven't gotten over. the dvds yet i know they're out on dvd they're not out on blu-ray i just need to buy them and, and bring them up yeah that'd be great um, i've seen episodes on cartoon network and i'm like oh you have that's me. That's me. <laughs> but it's like, I'm like Pirate 4 and Bystander 3. So it's like, I hear one thing in my voice and I'm like, what? <laughs> you know, Do so they you... show you on the credits? <laughs> yeah, on the credits. Oh, great. Yeah. That's awesome. There's additional voices and stuff. So That's awesome. Yeah. I don't have an IMDb page yet, so I'm going to have to knock them on that. Yeah, you need to. You need to. But uh, if I always thought like you just got one automatically, but you have right, to actually yeah. pay yeah, for you... it. I did I'm too. Like, that's like I thought the, the same thing. I thought that's like I... the freaking star of the Walk of Fame or whatever. You got to right. pay for that too. I'm exactly. like, that's lame. That is ridiculous. And then they have the IMDb Pro for for actors to put on their resumes and that sort of thing. And mm-hmm. and I had a friend say, "Yo, you ought to pay the fee for that." I'm like, I'm not buying an IMDb page, yeah. IMDb Pro, when I can just look at the things. It's like just googling yourself over and over again. Right. It's just a little vain, I think. <laughs> It's uh, crazy, but yeah. So you don't have an IMDb page. Huh? I don't have an IMDb page, but yeah. I'm on the website, and they 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 said I sent them a headshot, and they were supposed to put up like all the people who were on the show, but they haven't done it yet. So I've been like sending her text messages every once in a while. Hey, when are you gonna put it up? When are you gonna put it up? Just to get it out there so I can see it because I'm I want to really start doing more of that. It's a blast to do. So I bet I can we're, imagine. We're coming up on the uh, the end of the first third here. It looks like you're in about the same spot I am. Yep. So we're gonna take a little bit of a break, and when we come back, we're going to. Uh, Talk about some movies and uh, get into that second third. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to part two, the second third of the James Norman Nicaraguan Puro. I'm liking it so far. I think it's pretty darn tasty. Getting a little bit of the uh, earthiness to it and... um, it is also really smooth. Absolutely. Um, great, uh, clean finish on the mouth and through the nose. Uh, Retro hail on it's really nice. It's got a little spice to it. It brings extra flavor to the cigar. and um, But it doesn't linger in the nose like a lot of really heavy cigars, which I don't mind, but you know it depends on the cigar, really. I recommend this cigar a lot of times to, to uh, people who have progressed past the Connecticut stage. Mm-hmm. The milder cigars, but want some flavor and want uh, to still have a smooth smoke. And I think what happens a lot of times is people confuse smooth with mild. You can have a stronger cigar that's very smooth. Oh yeah. And I, I think I find a lot of people confuse those two terms. I've mild means that the it's it's a mild smoke. It's not going to blow you away. It's not going to overwhelm you. 
Uh, it's not going to make you sick to your stomach if you're smoking it on an empty stomach. Smooth just means smooth. Yeah. And this is definitely a smooth cigar. And that's it. I think, like, Cubans are a good example of that. Most Cubans mm -hmm. are very smooth, but they're very strong cigars. Right. So, you know, you don't really realize that you're sitting there. It's kind of like drinking a fruity drink. You drink a bunch of fruity drinks, and then you right. get up, and you're like, right. boom, fall exactly. down because you're drunk. It's the right. same thing with a Cuban cigar. You can, first time I smoked a Cuban cigar, I was like, oh, it's nothing. It's just, you know, real smooth, and it tastes great, and, you know, the little twang, a little citrusy kind of thing going on. And then I finished and stood up, and I was like, yeah, slow motion. You Absolutely. Know? I'm like, I gotta have another one of those. I, I, that's never happened to me. Mm. No, you're a better man than yeah, me. No. <laughs> I'm a liar is what I am. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What do we got planned, Brandon? All right. So, movie guy. Okay. Let's see here. Let's test your knowledge, my friend. Oh, okay. Feel free to play along. All right. So, let's see here. I want you to list very quickly. Okay. Okay. So, see if you can come up with five movies pretty quickly that have cigar smokers in it. People smoking cigars. More than one character, or? Nah, it can even be just one character. And we're talking movies. Movies. Okay. Wyatt Earp immediately pops into my, my mind. Okay. Wow. Only one it's, Western. I can only name one Western? <laughs> oh, Because you're just going to go straight into the Clint Eastwood <laughs> movies, and that just kills it. Okay. Um, man, that's a good question. Patton? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Let's see. Boy, I thought this was going to be easier than it, than it is. It's pretty difficult. I'm drawing complete blanks here. Let's go with, wow, you're good. Let me give you a hint. Okay. So you cooked up a story and dropped the six of us in the meat grinder. Well, any Arnold movie. Yeah, <laughs> there you I was thinking that, but I couldn't think of a specific one. Predator. He's Predator. Smoking. Oh, that's right. He's always you gotta, smoking. You got to love Predator. It's like there's a thing that's, they don't even know what it is. It's going to kill him if it finds him. And he's there smoking cigars right. in the jungle. Yeah, like, nothing wrong with that. He's like, come, come here. Get me. I'm here. I've got my cigar. Find me. Like, really? <laughs> Dude. You okay, do do so, voice work. I can tell. Yeah. All right. So that's, okay, come that's on. three. Uh, three. Gee whiz. No more Arnold movies. No more Arnold Ooh. movies. That's, man, I'm in trouble here. How about, what is that movie where the, oh, come on. I know I'm leaving so, so there's many a, obvious there's a ones. Big, there's actually two big ones that are independent movies, and okay. I'm sure you've seen them. Okay. And one's even called. Really? Thank you for smoking? I don't smoke no. cigars on that. No. Uh, wow. Okay, I'm That's failing this movie. one. Harvey oh, Keitel's in it. Reservoir Dogs? No, they don't smoke cigars on no. that. Two movies. There's it's actually blank. two two flicks. Well, one's called Smoke. Oh, okay. I've seen Smoke. Yeah, he yeah. owns a cigar shop. Yeah, owns a cigar Although shop. Although he smokes cigarettes the whole movie. And then Blue in the Face. But who's the, the character, the actor in, in Smoke uh, that buys the fruity cigars? Who's that? Who's the actor? William Hurt? William Hurt, that's it. Yeah, yeah William Hurt. So you got Blue in the Face and Smoke, which both were, right. you know, one was original and the other was right. a sequel. I never saw the sequel. I like yeah. the first one. And then we're leaving out. One more. Cla think classics, because, you know, oh, yeah, classics, they oh, smoke cigars so. like crazy. Okay. Cigarettes and cigars were all over the place. Oh, uh, geez. Bogart, uh, Sam Spade, what's the movie? Maltese Falcon, does mm -hmm. he smoke cigars in that? He smokes a lot of cigarettes. I don't yeah, think he smokes cigars. Yeah, that's what I was thinking, cigarettes. But you're missing the big one. Oh, Casablanca. No. no. Who does that? And walks weird. Oh, Groucho Wiggles Marx. Any, any yeah. Groucho Marx. Now. Okay, any Groucho failed Marx. miserably on that one. Okay, <laughs> what else you got? Gee whiz. <laughs> So we got, they blank. actually list a couple. They list Smoke. Uh, they list the, the Gathering Storm and Into the Storm, okay. which are movies about Churchill. So that kind of is cheap. Oh, yeah. But you know, right. Albert Finney plays Churchill. Any Groucho Marx or any Marx Brothers movie. Barney's version? I'm not familiar with that, but it's got That's Paul the one Giamatti. Where... Oh, okay. In it. Okay. Any Orson Welles movie, apparently. He smokes oh, in every movie. Okay. I don't think I've ever seen an Orson Welles movie. You haven't seen Citizen Kane? I've seen pieces of Citizen Kane. What? I, I know, I know what Rosebud Fail. is. I know what Rosebud is. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's, a, that's see there. You just yeah. now so you're not gonna like it. Yeah, you're gonna no, see so it. Eh, I don't want to wait three hours to find out what Rosebud is. Yeah. What I already know. It's such a good movie. That's so it, well okay. made. The cinematography. There's two movies and... like that that I've always. I've never seen Casablanca, mm -hmm. and I've never seen Citizen Kane. And those are two movies. I Casablanca think is one of my all-time yeah. favorites. I watch it every year. Do you? Okay. It's a special movie for my wife and I. Okay. What do you got next? We saw it in the theater, and that was oh really when we we were vampires. No, it was they showed it, <laughs> they showed it at a you know it was a like re revisionist right. thing at the uh, in, in Austin and we saw it and we, that was when we kind of knew. See, I would like that's where I would like to watch it if I were to see mm -hmm. it. I would like to watch it at one of those when they bring it back and mm -hmm. one time showing type things. And a really new one that I didn't even think about, The Watchmen. 
I haven't seen the Watchmen. The Joker, the guy, the, the Joker, oh, whatever. Oh, yeah, I've seen that. Okay, yeah, he's, yeah. Like, he's got the cigar all the time. Doctor Strangelove. Okay, another big one. Mm-hmm. Peter Sellers is always Absolutely. chomping on a cigar. And uh, you know, what threw me off with the, the Sopranos. And when yeah. I found out we weren't doing movie, or, you know, it was just yeah. movies. Then I couldn't get my mind wrapped around any other. Another, another big one. Um, both actually, mm-hmm. um, both Cape Fears. Right, Robert Mitchum and, and De, Niro, De Niro, laughing and smoking cigars in the theater. Right. Uh, Ron Perlman smokes Hoya de, Nicu- uh, Hoya de Monterey's in, in uh, uh, Hellboy, Hellboy. Right, right. Yep. Yep. Uh, American Psycho. Okay. Is another one. All right. He's uh, smoking a cigar when he's about to kill the dude with the axe. And uh, Tony Montana. That's what I was trying to think of with The Sopranos. I was trying to think of the Pacino Scarface. movie, Scarface. Yep. Right. yep. So that, and then The Hangover. Okay. So uh, it's apparently uh, Mike Tyson smoking Gurkhas in that. Oh, is he? Okay. Yeah. So... I didn't know that. I have only seen that movie once. I've so. only seen it once also. Okay. Well, I enjoyed it. The second one was crap, but... Haven't seen it. You're not missing much. Uh, that's what it's I've heard. A big, giant redo. Was it Hangover 2 called Bridesmaids or something? No, Hangover, yeah. <laughs> that's Hangover 3. It yeah. should have called it Bridesmaids. Hangover right. 2 should be called Electric Boogaloo because it's that bad. Right. Just, but a lot of people like it, so... Okay. It suffers greatly from sequelitis where it's like the same script and they just right. change, you know, change the setting. Scenario. Yeah. It's like, let's right. take the same script and put it in, you know, wherever... Hong Kong or wherever the hell it was. I don't know. Okay. But yeah, so it's not, not a whole lot going on there. So any, that's pretty cool. Any more movie stuff? Uh, let's see. Ten movies to watch while smoking cigars. No. I had another one in here, but it didn't. I think I killed it when I looked up the flavor wheel. Yeah. Okay. I thought that. Uh, okay. Yeah. So now. Oh, I thought of one. I thought of okay. one. Uh, Elvis and. Oh, you said I couldn't do any more westerns. But Elvis no, and Charo. Do. Yeah. Charo, okay. they smoked uh, that's a good one. cigars a lot. I, God, I haven't seen that movie in freaking forever. Really? Okay, so now instead of just movies, okay. celebrities okay. that smoke cigars. You've I, already can got name, I, can name, I can name a bunch. Tom Selleck. Okay. Um, Kelsey Grammer. Yeah. And I knew that before the past, the last Cigar Aficionado magazine because that's uh, uh, Jeremy Irons. Yeah, he's on the cover this month. Yes. Um, Mel Gibson is a, yeah mostly a cigarette, but I've I've heard he's a cigar smoker as well. Yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, I don't know, I got one, and I doubt it's going to be on your list, but Courtney Cox used to be a big cigar smoker. Really? Yes. At least that's what, I read that somewhere. I've, yeah. I've never seen her smoke a cigar, obviously, but I've read that she enjoys a good cigar. Yeah. Jack Nicholson's a big jar. Jack a big Nicholson, cigar smoker. Uh, Michael Douglas. Mm-hmm. Danny DeVito. Danny DeVito. Uh, man, there's a, there's a quite there's a few. There's a gazillion of them. You know, right. the legends, like George Burns. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, Demi Moore. Was on the cover. I don't know if she actually smokes. No, I do know that she and her and Bruce Willis both uh, smoke cigars yeah. when they were married. Anyway, that's way cool. I wonder if she cool. still does, or if Ashton's like, "No, man, it's bad for you." Like, slap that <laughs> little pansy boy. And I, I remember an article several years ago that Jennifer Aniston and Brad Pitt like to frequent a cigar bar in L.A. I don't know if that uh, if they were both smoking or not. They allow cigar bars in L.A. Yes, very few. <laughs> wow. Well, I this thought... is back when Brad Pitt and her were married. Yeah, so no was, kidding. Yeah. No kidding. Yeah. Uh, John Travolta is another big one. Right. Um, Pavarotti. Right. Uh, who else we got here? Some of these I don't recognize. Oh, okay. The chick from, um, what's her name? Virginia Madsen. Okay. So there's a couple of the women in here. I think her brother smokes too. Carmen Electra? Eh. Okay, yeah. I've seen a couple pictures of okay. her smoking cigars. Right. Jennifer Aniston's in here. Oh, is she? Okay. Mike Ditka. Ditka. How do we forget Ditka? Mm, yeah. Freud. Right. Sigmund. Sometimes a cigar is just a cigar. Yep. Unless it's not. Winston Churchill is a big one. We knew that. We yeah, agree absolutely. That. And then, right. of course, Bill Clinton. Come on. <laughs> the infamous cigar. You had to go there. Smoker. You had to go there. Well, he's on the list. I'm okay. just looking. And some long-haired hippie dude, but I don't know who he is. I have no idea who that guy is. He's probably a wrestler or something. I don't uh, know. Might be Sports Bo Bice. Guy? Might be Bo Bice. Bo Bice. He's one not American a celebrity. He's he won American, American Idol. Idol. Uh, Peter Falk, I saw. Yeah, yeah Peter Falk. And Shatner, we yep. mentioned Shatner. And this, whoever that is, like they just show her head, which is weird, or oh, no head on that. Alfred Hitchcock. Oh yeah, big one. Totally forgot Hitchcock. That looks like JFK. Buddy Holly or somebody. JFK. Nope. That's Groucho. Was that? that was Groucho. Who is this? I don't know. Daisy Fuentes. Oh wow. Yep. That's actually not much of a celebrity anymore, but no. Yeah. Who was I that? forgot it. That's uh, Raquel oh, Welch. Raquel Welch, absolutely. Yeah, I remember her. Angie Dickinson, I think, was a cigar smoker. Yeah. Chuck Norris. Chuck Norris, absolutely. Jim Belushi is also. Uh-huh. 
They own that restaurant here in Dallas there for a while. Oh, Kevin yeah. Spacey. Kevin Spacey, cool. All right. You got Kramer. Kramer. Whatever his name is. Michael Richards. Michael Richards, yeah. Yes. This looks like... Um, that's, that's Kelsey, Kelsey Grammer. Grammer. Yeah, yeah, we talked about him. Uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger. The, is that The Rock or is that... Who is that? Oh, Sam Jack, yeah. Oh, Samuel Jackson. Uh, Samuel Jackson, of course. Denzel. looks like Denzel Washington. Yeah. It is. Cool. That's kind of cool. See, with all these people smoking cigars, we should not have issues with rights. Oh, Bill Cosby. How do we leave yeah, him out? Yeah, big one. Wow. Absolutely. Is Arnold in here twice? He's up here. And then who is this? That's Arnold, too, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. What the heck? Really? Yeah. Such a, such a big cigar smoker. They put him in there twice. That's it. What else we got here? <clears throat> There's Jennifer Aniston. Uh, Carmen Electra. Who is this? We forgot. Uh, JFK, we mentioned him. That is someone I can't tell. Oh, Jennifer, Jennifer Lopez. Lopez. Jennifer Lopez? Lopez? Yeah. Yeah, I okay. could see her and Mark Anthony sparking up when they were married. All right. Wait, whoa, whoa. Who is that? Oh. oh, the ever sexy Selma Hayek. Mm -hmm. Oh, Nicole Kidman, too. Who's Who the this? heck is that? She's pretty. Who is she? I don't know. I have no idea. Some redheaded girl that's hot. She is hot. That, yeah. Yeah, Nicole Kidman. Okay. That's Sharon Stone. Was that Sharon Stone? Mm hmm. Sharon Stone's mm -hmm. in there twice. Yeah, she is. Interesting. And then yeah, some hikes in there twice again, too. It's pretty cool stuff. So, yeah, a lot of people smoke cigars, and people enjoy them, and they're awesome, and and they're trying to take them away from us. Well, I've got one for you. Okay. Favorite cigar scene in a movie? Oh. Favorite cigar scene in a movie? Crap. Crap. I don't know. I can think of movies that cigars are in, but I can't think of. So I was doing it the other way. I was thinking more scenes, and I couldn't think yeah. of the movies. I, I, the first one that comes to mind is Expendables Two, but it's just him smoking a cigar. I have no idea what. You can't think it. of a scene. I well, if really I had to think, think of a movie. scene, it would be because uh, I'm a historical kind of guy too. And Wyatt Earp mm -hmm. before the gunfight at the OK Corral, the real Wyatt Earp. We're not talking about the movie. The real Wyatt Earp, just minutes before the gunfight at the OK Corral, actually bought a cigar and was smoking it. When he found out that the Clantons and McClowries were down at the OK Corral and they were getting ready to go down the street and have the big shootout. Mm -hmm. And the movie White Earp depicts that. Yeah. They show him right before his brothers come to get him to go down for the fight yeah. and purchasing a cigar. And it's a Lancero, you can tell, which you don't usually see Lanceros in movies. Yeah. And uh, he bites the end off it, as you should in a good Western, obviously. Yeah. And fires it up, and then uh, so I like the historical significance of it, and I like the fact that they actually put that in the movie. That's cool. And showed that. Yeah, I've seen that movie once. I need to. I need to revisit it. I really liked it when I watched it. I remember it being. I was sick when I saw it. Okay. And for some reason, sick being sick and watching the movie does one of two things for me. I either love it or I hate right. it. Right. Right. And Lawrence of Arabia and Wyatt Earp, both movies I saw when I was sick, and I loved them both. Mm -hmm. And uh, Hellboy Two, I saw when I was sick and hated it. Right. But um. I've heard it's pretty good. I just haven't watched it. It's fun. It I've not seen it all the way through. Yeah. But I've probably seen the whole movie, just never on in one sitting. Yeah. It's cute. I mean it's it's got it has moments. But it's funny how much cigars kind of um incorporate into your life. Like now when we go see movies, my wife hates this, but if there's a cigar in a movie You like, try to identify it? I usually can identify it right. and I'll just lean over and go it's a uh, Cuban Cohiba. She's, <laughs> she, she like hits me up right. Stop! Don't even say it. I'm like, right. oh come on, you come know on, I gotta say it. It's right here. I got it. It's in my head. I gotta say it. <laughs> yeah, there was a movie I was watching a, a few years ago. It's called Henry Poole was here. It's mm -hmm. a Luke Wilson independent movie, and he moves into a house and he's cleaning out from under the kitchen sink, and he pulls out the cigar box and they show it for a fraction of a second, mm -hmm. and I turned to the person in the room with me and I said, Ashton VSG. And he said, what? I said, that's what that cigar box was. So we rewound it, pushed pause, sure enough, Ashton and VSG. So. <laughs> you just get to where you can yeah, just, you just know, boom, you just pick right them up. That. It's funny. And, and I mean, seriously, it was one-tenth of a second they showed that box. I was very proud of myself. Yeah. That one. And, you know, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't believe that cigars are addicting like cigarettes, but I sure do want to smoke one when I see one in the movie. Oh, it's very subliminal. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Do you it's have like, a cigar scene? Come on. No. <laughs> think of something. <laughs> I got nothing. You had those list of movies. There's not a scene. Um, yeah, I, not I mean, a scene in Scarface. Come, the first one that comes to mind is the is the the Cape Fear scene. Okay. Oh, okay. The Robert De Niro one because uh -huh. he's just you know it's just him blatantly saying I'm here. There's nothing you can do about mm -hmm. it, and I'm gonna freaking destroy you. He's just sitting right. in the back. He's got his feet up. He's loud as heck. He's puffing on that cigar. Right. And they show that smoke getting into the projector, and you see it affecting the image. Yeah. It's just such a great. That scene. is a great scene. That's a great scene. Yeah. And we'll we'll do this sometime later on also, but 
I like the original Cape Fear better myself. I, I, do, I do, too. I think I they're like both great. Yeah. But, I, you know, De Niro was in an era where you, they could do more. They could show more, mm -hmm. you know, violence. They could show more, uh, you know, scarier scenarios than they could in the Robert Mitchum days. Yeah. But I thought he pulled that character off so well. He was so oh, yeah. creepy in that movie. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think that you probably, I, don't know, I can't say that you had to act more, mm -hmm. but it was more about the dialogue and right. the acting and, right. the, you know, everything around it. It had to all gel for it to really work back right. then, and back before special effects really became right. a thing. Right. And now they just cheat so much; it's not even, you know, you really do have to go to the independent movies to get right. a good to film. get the good right, get the good film, get the good acting. And there's, you know, like even guys like Spielberg. Spielberg's made some really good movies, but he's, you know, fallen into that same kind of special effects trap. You know, I saw Lincoln, and I was like, okay, there's a couple of good performances, but it just seems really false you know okay. given that it's shot now and i i you start to recognize okay that's a special effect that took me out of the movie mm -hmm. and i don't know it's like somewhere between jurassic park and now mm -hmm. special effects just got really weird because right. jurassic park was a good combination of um physical effects and cgi mm -hmm. to where it wasn't too noticeable it was right. realistic right and it, you know that movie was like dinosaurs are real you just freaking believe it you know but um not thought, so much anymore thought us another cigar uh movie Forrest Gump. Lieutenant Dan's always smoking yeah, a cigar. Yeah, that's true. Lieutenant Dan. Lieutenant Dan. Lieutenant yeah. Dan. Yep. Yeah. That's my bo oh. Yeah. That's <laughs> Magic a, legs. Sorry. Yeah. That and was see, a very a, terrible Forrest Gump that's impersonation. A, that's, a, that's one of those directors, too. But I think Zemeckis uses uh, special effects to his benefit. Right. I think he really does a good job with the special effects. Um, right. I didn't notice them in Forrest Gump. Well, I didn't. Lieutenant Dan's legs. Yeah, you don't. You know? I mean, they're just. It looks like he's really got no legs, you know. Right. And, and um, it's slight, and I like it when he does subtle things like that to bring the special effects into a moment of the movie instead of it just being a special effect for special effects' sake. Right. right. So, what do you think? Um, I'm really enjoying it. I, I love the cigar. It's, yeah. Um, wonderful. This this could be a go to for me. I mean, it's really got a great flavor. It actually has a little bit of complexity to it. It, it does. Changed it a does. little bit it does on change. me. It does change. Um, I do. I'm getting some leather now, and I wasn't getting the leather before. It's uh, got that spiciness on the palate mm -hmm. that's picking up. It's right. getting a little spicier now. Mm -hmm. So I, I dig it. I, I, I have it as a top five cigar of the year as far as what has been released in the past, you know, since the, the IPCPR show of last year. Mm -hmm. This is definitely a top five for Excellent. me. For me. All right, so we're done with the uh, second third on this. So we're going to take a little break. When we come back, we'll get into the last third and talk a little bit more about some other subjects that you might find interesting. So stick around. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Calypso Cigar Shop and Lounge podcast. I am Brandon Luna. I am Randy Rankin. And we're going to get into the last third here of the James Norman Nicaraguan Puro Robusto. Um, so far, I'm digging it. It's delicious, and uh, I could definitely see adding, I would, I would even say this is box worthy. Um, oh, absolutely. Just because it's a great grab go to cigar. Absolutely. Um, I like it a lot. It's tasty. It is, and I really like the finish. It's really finishing well. Mm -hmm. A lot more, a lot yeah. more flavor now. It's a lot getting, more yeah. It's like there's all kinds of just different stuff coming in here. Um, I'm getting a little bit of um, grassiness or something. It's but it's not a bad add. Okay. It's just a. It's like a little different little tinge. Okay. That I'm picking up there, but okay. I, I like the the leather of it and the spice. The retro hail is awesome. And it's got a clean finish. Mm -hmm. um, my gauge for a good cigar versus bad cigar is the finish of a cigar. Yeah, if you get, you know, absolutely. if you finish it and you get that, you just smoked a pack of cigarettes, taste in your mouth. Yeah, that yeah. just tells you. To, to me, it tells me that that's like crap. You know, tobacco. That something's wrong with it, or right. something didn't. I don't know. So, like, you know, that's one of the reasons I stopped smoking a certain brand because the next day I always felt like I smoked a pack of cigarettes or something. So, right. But uh, this, I can tell. I mean, even when you just finish smoking it, you know, you take a couple of minutes away from it, it's not there. You just get a, a good flavor, but mm -hmm. it's not that yucky tobacco taste. Right, right. The tobacco that's been burning and yeah. you're trying to finish it. Yeah. No, exactly. I, I've, I've always been impressed with this uh, cigar from, the, from, the, from day one, mm -hmm. and that hasn't changed. How long have you guys had it in the shop? That's a good question. When did we get that? It was like a month ago or two months ago? About probably beginning of the year. I think beginning of the year. Okay, because I had the one, uh, I got, Matt gifted me one back then, Okay, and that's the one I smoked a couple of days ago, and it was it was darn good. Right. I liked it a lot. Yeah. So these have been properly... Properly stored, properly the, humidified. Yep. The 
And don't forget, we have the buy five, get six special. So you can come by the store in Richardson, or you can give us a call at 972-761-9903. If you're out of the state of Texas, obviously you do not have to pay sales tax, and we yep. will ship. Yep, and you can also go on Facebook there and uh, like us on Facebook. Um, what's the Facebook thing? It's Calypso, Calypso Cigar. Calypso Cigar Shop and Lounge, yep. Richardson, Texas. And we're going to have a podcast up on there as well, so you can listen to episode one if you missed it. Uh, now, the special is buy any five, get a sixth free. Um, I want to make sure you don't think they're getting six free. <laughs> right. Yes. Because <laughs> that'd be exactly. a phenomenal deal. But right. Yeah, buy five, get one free, and uh, you can get, does that go for, if you come into the shop, is that any Absolutely. cigar? Uh, uh, no, just for this James Norman. Okay, so it's a James, James, so you get Norman. a sixth James Norman, and as long as it's the same price or less, then it's free. Right. So you can come in and get like five Toros and get a Robusto if you want to try the Absolutely. Robusto. Absolutely. Yes. Or even, can you mix and match? Can you get? You can get mix and match. The free okay. one will be the least expensive of the okay. group. So if you, get, you know, if you get five, four Magnum, a Toro, and a Robusto, the Robusto will be free. Have you made your way through the whole, through all the different sizes on this? I have done Toro and Robusto. I'm not a 60 ring guy. Uh, I would like to try it just so I can say I have. But yeah. uh, I've been so impressed with the Toro and the Robusto that I, there's hasn't been a urgency to try the 660. Yeah, I'll probably I'll probably end up trying one just to say I did. Okay. Um, yeah. I like to test. I typically, if I find a cigar I like, I like to test all the different right. sizes because you're gonna get a different smoke when you, when you get into those different sizes because there's right. you know different amount of filler and a little bit more of the leaf and you know sometimes it's uh, it makes a big difference. It really depends on the cigar. But I've noticed it like uh, going in the Oliva line. You, know, you get into the smaller ones, it's totally different smoke than getting into oh, the absolutely. larger ones. Absolutely. Like the Melanio, which you haven't had yet. I know. Um, the I smaller know. smaller ones are just a really a flavor bomb and it's got some you know kind of strength to it but you get further up and it gets really kind of smooth right. it's not mild at all it's a medium smoke but it gets a lot smoother right okay. the larger size you go up the torpedo's great it's really good i need to try that i know yeah we'll get there this uh and this james norman we're smoking is we're smoking the robusto size uh and it is five and a quarter the 52? Yep, five and a quarter by 52. Five and a quarter by 52. And uh, I think the 52 ring on a, on a Robusto, mm -hmm. especially in this cigar, I think it really suits it well. Yep. And I love the Nicaraguan uh, binder. And, oh, and absolutely. The, it's just a, it's one of my favorites. It's got that spiciness to we're, it, and you get a little bit of that. Yeah, we're both Nic Nicaraguan guys. Yeah. We really are. I like Dominicans too, but Nicaraguan seems to be where my wheelhouse is. I tend to lean towards Nicaraguans if I'm not able to get a, a cigar from the island south of Miami. About 90 miles south. It will south, not be named. One. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, so, um, yeah, I like Nicaraguans. I think, and, you know, to talk to that, I think uh, Nicaraguans and Dominicans and a lot of the cigars have really kind of caught up with them. Oh, they've caught up with the rest. Yeah. yeah. The rest of the world has caught up with them. Yeah, Absolutely. for sure. Absolutely. you got so many great blenders out there making really good cigars and giving you a ton of variety. I think, you know, saying that Cubans are the best is kind of a thing of the past. There's equals, I think, in Nicaraguans as well. Absolutely. For, for my, you know, taste profile, at least. I'm not right. saying that I don't like Cubans. I like right. them. Right. But, you know. You know, there's, there's a lot of romance with the Cuban. Mm -hmm. You know, it, the rolling on the thigh. You know, there's all kinds. Of, cigars have such a, a romantic history. Yeah. And Cuba's, you know, primarily responsible for that romance. And yeah. So that's why people still lean towards them, I'm, I'm sure. It has a lot to do with it anyway. Oh, yeah, for sure. And it's also the forbidden fruit, so there's that Even aspect that. of it as Even well. Even that, yep. Yeah. Absolutely. So one of the things I wanted to discuss um, this session is the, um, I would call it the buyer beware section. All right. Um, now, I, you know, we're obviously in a B&M smoking a cigar. And B&M uh, means brick and mortar. Brick and mortar, yes, getting into the acronyms again. I'm a firm believer in this is where you need to develop your palate. This is where you need to go to try new things. I think buying online is great for some people, especially new people that are getting into it because they want to try a bunch of stuff for cheap. But it's not necessarily the stuff that you want to try. Right. The reason I say buyer beware is online vendors, there tends to be um, a little bit of what they call bait and switch, which is a term that basically refers to, you know, back in the day, you would have these great specials, and they still do it. I mean, you right. know, get into the holiday season, there's, you know, all these door specials, and you get there, and they have one, and then you've got to get something else that you're really not looking forward to getting, and then, you know, you're out the door, and you're not really happy. Right. Um, and a lot of the online vendors tend to do that, and the reason, reason being is everybody wants to make money. You know, the, the brick-and-mortar stores want to make their money. The online stores want to make their money. Um, so what a lot of the vendors will do in order to placate both of them is they'll make – different cigars right. for each. Now, right. brick-and-mortar stores are going to have the cigars that you read reviews about on Cigar Aficionado and Cigar Snob and Smoke 
they're they're reviewing the, the real cigars, the cigars that were made by the blender. You know, these are the ones that are released, and that's what they're rating. When you go online, a lot of times what you're getting is a a lesser version of that, or a I can't really say. Sometimes they're not necessarily lesser; they're just different. Right. Um, I fell into this trap early on with the Tempest because I really liked the Tempest, and mm-hmm. I got a whole bunch of them. I got a box at a, at a you know event. Right. And fell in love with it, and I wanted more, and I didn't necessarily want to pay the the B and M price. So I went online, and I got you know like a, they call a Mazo of ten or a Mazo of twenty, which is basically unwrapped, you know, not in a box right. cigars. Right. But what you run into there is it's not necessarily the Tempest; it's the Tempest something else. Right. So they add a name to it, and the description makes it sound like it's the Tempest, but really, when you talk to one of the reps. It's something that was made specifically for these vendors. Right, and it's not the same cigar. It's not the same cigar. It's not the same wrapper. It's not the same blend. It Phil. still has the name, but it's really a different cigar. And they do that because the brick-and-mortar stores need to keep a certain price point, and you know, these online vendors can't necessarily offer that price point on the same stuff because then it would just put the brick-and-mortar stores out of right. business. Right. So they offer a little bit different product. And I've talked to several reps, and I won't name names, but they've told me straight up, a lot of these are seconds. Yeah, basically. Most of them are. Yeah, they're seconds yeah. or stuff that's been, you know, they blended they it, didn't necessarily it work reason. out. Yeah. yeah. Big one that just happened, EP uh, Carrillo put out one. Uh, very popular line of theirs. And there's a vendor now that has a, a vintage version of it. And um, it's funny because I, I, I like EP Carrillo stuff a lot. And I, I tend to lean towards, you know, when they have a new product, I want to try it. I like right. short runs a lot. I like the uh, New Wave Connecticut. Uh, even like the inch, which is you know blended for a larger ring gauge. And I'm right. not a big ring gauge guy, but that's still a tasty cigar. Right. So I was curious to try this you know vintage one, mm-hmm. and um, got my hands on it and awful. I mean, just really? awful. And and it's right. funny because you read the description of it, and it even says in the description, this is a cigar that was made five years ago. It was supposed to be that year's cigar. Right. But he didn't like the blend enough, so he put it away, let right. it age. So that, you know, they could let it age. That's right. what they call it, let it age. Basically, it was crap that they didn't want to put out. Right. And this particular vendor went and bought all of it and put it out, and now it's available to everybody. And it's funny because all the reviews I've heard of this and read on this were saying it's not the same cigar. It's, you know, the last third is just really bad. You're going to, you know, if you if this is the only short run you smoke, you're going to hate it, and it's right. really going to taint you on, I said taint, uh, it's going <laughs> to taint you on the brand. And, uh, you know, I think that's a bad thing because it's, it's just really, you know, if you're, Coming into it with a love of cigars and you want to taste these new cigars, go to the B&M, pick it up, try it. If you like it, you know, then that's really the one you need to stick with. Um, some, yes, you can get some good deals online, um, but a lot of that stuff, these guys are, are there to make a buck. And nine times out of ten, they're pushing their own stuff. They're right. pushing stuff that's made right. for them. And that's what you see on the covers. Like, I've got a couple here. We're not going to name names. But, you know, this particular cigar is, um, you know, made for them right it's pretty popular online but you're never going to see it in a in a b&m right um now that same blender has cigars that are in b&ms mm-hmm. but these ones aren't and they're inexpensive cigars and you and know that's what i think they that's the purpose an online yeah uh, shop is for if you're a per, if you're the type of person and, and at one point before i really knew what i was doing cigar wise uh i ordered online because i could get 25 sticks for 50 bucks yeah and if but they were, you know, they're just sticks. There's nothing special to them. If you're someone who has to have a cigar going all day long and you don't care what you're smoking, yeah, go online and, and buy that. But if you're really trying to develop your palate, if you're really trying to find the best cigars there are uh, available, you have to go to a brick and mortar. Yeah. And not only that, but, I mean, a lot of these have construction issues or, you know, there's an issue with um, the type of tobacco that's in it. Like, a lot of times the blend is off or whatever. Every once, there's diamonds in the rough. There's right. some that are good. Right, right. Um, but you can't really trust the marketing because, you know, I you know would read these articles and, and be like, oh, wow, that sounds awesome. I got to get it. And you get it, and it's horrible. And then you go online to the forums, and they're like, yeah, it's good with a year or two. It's like, well, well crap. Then, you, know I, what? <laughs> you know what? I need to smoke now. Yeah, I don't, don't want to <laughs> wait a year to smoke. If I'm going to do that, I'll get Cubans, you know, but you know, it's because right. you've got to wait for those. So what the heck, you know? Right. So, I think it's, you know, it, the big part of it is, you know, you're saving money. But honestly, um, you can go into a brick-and-mortar store, and they have house blends that are probably just as good, if not better, than a lot Much of what better. these guys are selling. And you can get good deals on those. You guys do, like, absolutely. five packs for, like, 17 bucks. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, we do bundles. Uh, we have bundled cigars that are our house brand that are bundled. And I would smoke those, not not just because actually I, I was smoking before I even started working. I would buy it, come in and buy the bundles because they were good smokes at a good price and they were better than what I was getting online. Yeah. Just pure and simple. 
there was one, and we won't mention name, obviously, and I, I got a free humidor, so it came with 20 cigars, and I'm like, oh, great. Yeah. This is back when I could smoke anything, and I didn't really care. Yeah. I smoked two of them and gave them to my bro- brother. <laughs> yeah. I said, he told me he smoked two, and then those were the ones he gave to friends when they came yeah. over that and trap that I want to smoke. Yeah, there's those traps are all over the place online. There's a place where you can bid on stuff and mm-hmm. um, get really cheap stuff, and I bid on this one thing with a friend of mine, and he knew what it was but he didn't tell me because he's an ass mm-hmm. <laughs> and uh he's like yeah man it's cheap get him you know so i got like a baker's dozen for like nine bucks or something every single one of them was just repugnant and i oh had it was just horrible i'm like this is the worst oh. cigar ever he's like yeah i know i'm like thanks a lot well, thank <laughs> <you for shit. laughs> that's yeah. awesome yeah man. i'm gonna give you my dog rockets now you <laughs> bastard my ex-wife loved the smell of a cigar but when i smoked those cigars mm-hmm. she'd leave the room i mean yeah. she just couldn't stand the smell of them yeah, I mean, and there is, there is. I'm not gonna say there's not good deals. There is some vendors, you know, like this particular one that does, you know, they promote a lot of, of real cigars that you can get in a B and M, that are, you know, um, like this one has um, a lot of Roma de Cuba on it, and those are those are great cigars. Um, but you know, it's they'll get but, you on the marketing because they have a lot of stuff in here that's I think is kind of. Um, and even and once again, you don't know that those are the true the same blend. Right, yeah. yeah. Well, they have their own versions, and and that's I understand right. like. Um, a couple of places have their own blends, and sometimes they're good. Like, I know Padron actually makes a blend for an online vendor that was very good, very limited, but, you know, they're diamonds in the rough. You right. really got to search for them. Right. Um, but, you know, these guys, a lot of these guys have, um, like, you know, just to give you an example, that one actually has, you know, a, a cigar that you know. This one has a, a brand that you know, but everything in there, I've never seen any of those anywhere. Right. So it's basically just seconds rebranded. And um, you're probably not going to get a great smoke out of any of these. Um, so, yeah, I mean, just just be careful where you buy your cigars. If it's too good to be true, chances are it is. It probably is, exactly. Um, unless you've got the revenue to let a whole bunch of cigars sit for a year or two, you know, for maybe a good smoke, then I would say, you know, stick to your brick and mortars. Support the local guys and uh, make yeah. those relationships because a lot of times you'll get, you know, some good deals that way. You know, these online stores, you don't have a place to come sit and smoke and talk with people and watch football games. Yeah. And you really don't know what you're getting into. You're getting into, uh, you know, something that someone wrote that they thought was good that probably didn't smoke the cigar. And you get these descriptions that sound like, you know, that sounds freaking awesome. And then you get it and you're like, ah, it's not what it said. And it was. At a brick and mortar, you, you'll talk to a salesperson, obviously, that hopefully knows yeah. what they're talking about. And, and, and 95% of the time they do. Yeah. And that's where you're going to learn. And that's where you're going to develop your palate. And that's where you're going to develop uh, an open mind to trying new things, mm-hmm. and that's when you're going to find the diamonds in the rough. Although it's not, they're not really in the rough; they're right out in front of you here, yeah. you know, in, in a brick and mortar. Plus, they're they're well maintained. That's the mm-hmm. big thing I noticed about buying online too. Is uh, a lot of people buy their cigars online and smoke them right when they get them. Yeah. And those things are dry to the bone; they're not oh, yeah. treated well in transit. They fall know, apart, especially they if you're getting them in the yeah. summer. Forget it. Yeah. You know, it's just a you a get bad them in the summer. Scene. You're at work. FedEx yeah. leaves it on your front doorstep when it's 105 outside. You come in, you get get home, open them up, and smoke one. Yeah, good luck. Yeah, good luck with that. That's not going to be a good deal. Now this particular one, I mean, I actually like that one. It's uh, I'm not going to say it again, but mm-hmm. that one's actually a decent smoke. But what happens? What I've noticed a lot of these times too is with a lot of these different ones, is that every once in a while you'll get a blender that does a lot of online stuff, and then they'll step out and actually do one that hits the brick and mortar. And either they'll fail miserably or they'll break right. out and do something good. Right. And there is one. Um, A.J. Fernandez mm-hmm. has a couple in brick and mortars now. Right. And he actually does some good blends and stuff. Yeah. He's heavy into the into the online scene as well. So but you got to be careful. Absolutely. Yeah. Buyer beware. Buyer beware. Well, we're finishing up on this uh, James Norman. Mm-hmm. And by the way, speaking of uh, cigar magazines, as we were earlier, this cigar has been sent to Smoke Magazine for review. So we'll be looking in Smoke Magazine over the next couple of months and uh, read their review of this James Norman Nicaraguan Puro. For sure. So yeah, what do you I think? I like it. Yeah, it's getting a, definitely getting a little more spice and a little more leather at the end there, and it's big time blasts of that um, almond kind of nuttiness flavor. Right. Uh, so yeah, it's it's definitely a great smoke. And another thing about the online vendors too is they won't leave you alone. I mean, once you uh, you see oh, how many yeah. freaking catalogs yeah. I have, I got yeah. like twelve catalogs coming to my house. One of them, which will remain unnamed, they won't take you off any list. It's like they're, I don't know, it's like they stalk you or something. Uh-huh. Like I had to literally call and tell them I was dying for them to leave me alone. I was like, mm, hello, I, I can't smoke cigars anymore. Mm, you know, so you're, that's the only way going, I could get them to leave me alone. You're going to hell. You know that, right? Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
yeah, I, I never got the magazine. Well, one I did, but another one, one of the big ones years ago, I ordered one time from them mm -hmm. and I was getting emails every day yeah. from them. And the other day I, I, t I just started marking them as spam years ago. Yeah. The other day I was clean. I was looking for something that someone emailed me and it wasn't there. So I was looking through spam to see if maybe it had gotten shifted to spam. And there was this company. They, they're still sending me stuff, even though it goes right into my spam folder. But yeah, so beware. They're gonna, they're just gonna inundate you. Yeah, with 500, emails, five hundred spam emails, <laughs> spam emails, spam catalogs. Yeah, yeah, junk mail. Uh, good. But keeping the post office the, alive again. Good filler for the recycle bin. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. So overall, a good smoke. I definitely um, am looking at, looking forward to getting some of these and putting them in my locker here. When using your star system that you're so intrigued by that yeah you're hoping, is this a five star i'd say it's a i'd say it's a four and a half just because i want to try a couple more and oh, okay and really, i right. still want to get through the whole line okay um all right, all right. five you know five is a you got to get okay yeah, that's fair yeah i think well four to five is a 90 percent. i think anybody yeah I'd give a 90%. It, you know, if you're gonna go by numbers i'd give it a 95 yeah it's, yeah, a, it's a it's a good smoke it's mm -hmm. a very flavorful um consistent burn i haven't had to relight it at all i've been puffing on it you know, pretty, once a minute or so, yeah. yeah. And it's a great smoke for for newbies. A newbie could pick this up and smoke this and not be blown away, yeah. And not be like, oh man, it was too strong for me. No, a newbie could pick this up. Uh, people like us who are well seasoned, we can pick it up and enjoy it. It's 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 a cigar for everybody, really. Yeah. My indicator of a good cigar mm -hmm. is how soon do I want to smoke it after I've smoked it. Right. I would yeah. smoke another one of these right now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Okay. Well, that's a good that's a good indicator right and, there. And I might. <laughs> <laughs> you might, you might have to. Might have to. Yeah. Well, hopefully Matt will join us. Matt Badoski, the owner here at Calypso Cigar Shop, has been under the weather the last couple of weeks, and hopefully he will join us on the next one. That yeah, be that'd great. be great. I'd love to have him in here. He's very knowledgeable and a great guy, uh, funny as heck, too. So, um, once again, Calypso Cigar Shop and Lounge in Richardson, Texas. Uh, phone number again? 972-761-9903. I'm Randy. I'm here almost all the time, and if I'm not... Matt will be here. Mm -hmm. And visit us on Facebook at Cigar, uh, Calypso Calypso Cigar, Cigar Shop, Shop and, and Lounge. Lounge. Is it just Calypso Cigar Shop and Lounge, all one word? I think so on the Facebook page. Okay. We'll, have you, we'll have an accurate Facebook page, but you can search us, Calypso Cigar Shop and Lounge. It's in yeah. Richardson, Texas. Click like, and we have uh, specials on there all the time. Mm -hmm. So, Randy, thanks again for doing this with me. And, it's fun. Uh, it's been a blast, and uh, it's been great smoking with you guys, and hope you visit us next time on the Calypso Cigar Shop and Lounge podcast. Have a good day, Brandon. You too, Randy.